Like I'm doing rolls and oh, grab my kid. And then, uh, so it's the ability uh, to be okay with and are allowed to tap into that. And I was doing this mindset teaching. I was allowing people to kind of get into that before all these things that now manufacture that were a thing. Be it now and then it will come to you. You can't wait till you get it to become that thing. So, we want to welcome you guys to episode 6 of the DNA of Greatness podcast. Now, today is a powerful episode. An episode that I believe that the likeness of Coach Bobby Bluford was born, bred, created for. And that is waking up the inner beast. Now, Coach, before you even give your introduction, I want to tell you why I chose this subject specifically, right? And how the subject even chose us. I remember being in your former gym, the UMC gym, Ultimate Muscle Confusion, and I would see people in there who were like the least likely person to be, you know, rowing a 60 pound dumbbell. You had like 50 year old soccer moms and, you know, uh, rich preppy mothers like doing stuff in this gym that I wouldn't see most grown men doing, right? Let alone able to even keep up with. And so, you would always have the statement of like, there's there's that beast, like there's that animal in you, right? There's that mm-hmm. thing in every single one of us. Like even you who's driving, you know, the, the, the minivan with the six kids in it, like just as much as there may be in a, that NFL player, whoever it is, that is in you. And that really came back to surface for me because again, just being re-reminded of the power that God has bestowed within us. I was like, man, we really all have that, like that certainty that, you know what I mean? That thing yeah. in us that's just, I'm going to hunt and I'm going to get, period. Right. And so that's why I wanted to start. But um, before we dive into it, for our audience, if you have not yet met either of us, I am Aquarius Wave. And this right here is the Tower of Power, my uncle, a.k.a. Coach Bobby Bluford. You want to say what's up to the people? What's up, guys? Coach Bobby, uh, uh, glad to have you if it's your first time. Uh, I'm pretty convinced and and confident it won't be your last. Uh, today's topic, as as Aquarius mm-hmm. just touched upon, is something very near and dear to my heart that I've been trying to elicit from people for for many many years. So I'm excited to kind of dive into um, the details of how I do that and why we all have inside of us this inner beast. Mm. Beautiful. So that being said, I'm going to get just right into it. Unc, what is that inner beast to you? Well, I've said on on other podcasts, and I say often that the world we the world we live in is not real. And what I mean by that is everything mm-hmm. that we have that makes our lives wonderful and comfortable we create it from our minds right so this Mm -hmm. laptop that we are doing this podcast on the laptop or mobile phone that you're watching this podcast on the technology behind all of that the the invisible waves of energy that that allow the transmission of all these zeros and ones uh, that make up technology is all created. But before all of that, before everything that we've created, we were instinctually animals, mm. right? And Talk about like it. all animals, yeah. except, except human beings now, their key drivers of behavior are procreation and survival. Mm-hmm. And... Over millennials and centuries and decades and months and weeks and days, we've diminished and quieted that part of us that long ago had to go out and get their own water, had to protect their baby from danger, had to conquer a village, Mm -hmm. had to build a home, had to survive uh, this or that illness had to go cross country mm. on foot for the most part, or stagecoach. So 
what I learned, again, you know, my gift, as, as we've said many times, our gift is the ability to see common things in uncommon ways. Mm. So these right. thoughts that I'm, that I'm projecting now are not, they're unique, but they're not odd. Everyone watching this is probably nodding your head because it makes sense, but no one tells you in that way. Mm. So to me, working out, mm. you know, in this in this case, you know, you, you mentioned that you you first heard about this concept and thought about it when you saw an older woman doing weights you had never seen an older woman doing or even try to do. Correct. So the physical part yeah. is is the simplest to connect the dots, but it it, it applies to anything that that requires challenge. But I try mm. to I don't try I do I tell people that at the end of the day. What I'm trying to elicit in the physical space is the same DNA we have in us that had to survive real danger. And so that's, mm. that's still in there, but we've never, or very seldom, if we're lucky, had to bring out that inner beast that's in us. Because if you are in the mall mm. and you're a 45 year old mother of two toddlers and some stranger grabs your toddlers, you can sprint like you never thought you could. You can fight Absolutely. off somebody yeah. who tries to grab your baby if you have to, right? In fact, when I'm working out to yeah. this day, Aquarius, when I'm working out to this day, I still, to if I'm going, going through the motions, I will elicit an image of somebody grabbing my, my baby. And my baby's now wow. at 19 and 16, but I still, like I'm doing rolls and oh, grab my kid. And then, uh, so it's the ability uh, to be okay with and uh, allowed to tap into that. And I was doing this mindset teaching. I was allowing people to kind of get into that before all these things that now manufacture that were a thing. Right? CrossFit mm -hmm. now is the same illicit of the same emotion and vision. These mud races and these, you know, Spartan games, they're all doing the same thing that I thought about prior to these things being mainstream was giving people who, who spend their days in an office or in a courtroom or in a kitchen or whatever they're doing, never, not doing that, giving them an avenue to allow them to release this part of them that's inside of us. And when you see it, it's amazing. Hmm. When you do it for the first time, it's it's intoxicating. That's why people yeah. go back and do and do Spartan races and because once you do it and you remember kind of what what's inside of you, there's nothing like it. And going back to the office yeah. on, a, on on a Monday morning, just don't elicit the same kind of emotion <laughs> that you had yeah. on that Saturday. So that's what it's about. It's about remembering and reconnecting with that part of you that's in all of us. Mm. So my secondary question is, why do you believe, and then I'll chime in, why do you believe it is that we not only kind of suppress this aspect of ourselves, but why do we fear it in most cases? Well, we're taught, right? We're taught to fear, mm. right? So before there were rules and laws against conquering and using your physical presence to to dominate something or someone before we civilized mm. our world that was that was the means of getting right you went and got mm. what you wanted if you were if you were able to do that physically <laughs> right you and so mm. you walked around and then you communed with like-minded families or 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 areas so then you had like some structure but then that community did the same thing to other communities right using physicality yeah. and and pressure and and intimidation mm. to get what you want as we grew mm. and realized that we had to even if i had more power than you and this is this goes back to like my studying of economics right in school but even if i'm able mm to dominate you physically, right? There are things that you can do that I need, right? That give you a dominance in another area. So collaboration 
yeah. started to become more important than domination. Right? So yeah. as as those things progress and we realized as a human being or as a human species that we could create ways to collaborate and work together, we diminished the need to be physical. And so as we did that, mm. every every generation that followed the elders began to quiet and diminish the visible activities that demonstrated the old behavior that was needed in prior centuries and prior uh, wow. generations, right? So now, hmm. whereas Leonidas, who's my boy from, from the movie 300, that's, that's my idol, right? So whereas he, was, work out buddies. whereas he put a spear in his five-year-old son's hand and, and, yeah. and took him to the woods, right, to to fend for himself against wolves and beasts, real beasts. Now, you fast forward four, five, six generations, that father is is grabbing a toy from his boy, his, his son, who beat his sister over the head with it, who's a year younger. And so that that mm. that instinct to get what you want however you have to get it if it's physical that part of us becomes diminished and and it's, and mm. some would argue rightfully so right i'm not i'm not arguing right yeah, or wrong absolutely understand that that for, for yeah. reasons that do make sense <clears throat> we quiet that but that part is still in us right there and right. And, and if and and, and the, the males who watch this get it that's why boxing feels good that's why Physical sports feel yeah. good. That's why we watch right? football. That's why, yeah. Exactly. Absolutely. But the women mm -hmm. who do CrossFit or do, uh, you know, Spartan races or, 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 or work out heavily, they get it too, right? So it's all mm -hmm. genders, all ages. We have this inside of us that we still have a, uh, you know, have, have genetic makeup that makes us want to be physical Right, initially to protect, to 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 gain more things, to uh, you know procreate if you're a male, to to protect your babies if you're if you're a female, all those all those feelings are in us still, and because we can't yeah. do it or or elicit them in a way that's that's safe and legal, when we find ways to do it legally. There's a natural release of endorphins and good feeling most because yeah. our bodies are meant to still do that. So that's why I think Absolutely. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's why we we've over over the years have have made that um, something that we have diminished. And I, and and you said that we're afraid of, and I believe that's because when you're a young child, you're taught to to not use your words, don't use your hands, you know, all these things. Which again, yeah. I'm not saying yeah. right or wrong, but when you grow up thinking that punching stuff is bad, you know, why would you go and join a boxing gym? Because that that demonstration of physicality Absolutely. was frowned upon, you know, from the early age in diapers. Absolutely. That's beautifully, beautifully said. I think that's a master class <laughs> in evolutionary science, <laughs> to say the least. And there was just one little aspect I wanted to kind of tail end off of that, which mm -hmm. is um, convenience, yes. right? So I, I, I've often said, and this is not an original idea, as is no idea original. Everything is right. directly from source. But basically what I've observed from modern day society is that the one thing we will give our freedom up for in most cases is convenience, mm -hmm. Right. So we are willing to pay a premium for convenience. Like I remember when I was around 19, 20 years old and I was door dashing at the time. I cannot make this up. There was a Taco Bell right across the street from this apartment complex. And my door dash order was at that Taco Bell for that apartment across the Stop street. Stop it. Right? Stop. I, I, everything I love. So this was the craziest as far as like proximity. And then I was also on the McDonald's run where I... Picked the McDonald's up from San Jose and dropped it off in Palo Alto, actually a little past Palo Alto, 
and it was a ten or nine dollar order that this kid ordered. Like literally, like an eight year old, his parents probably didn't know that he had access to their DoorDash right. account, right? So, but my point in that is, like, not just obviously food deliveries, but it's really everything that we've kind of cultivated within this modern day society is built around convenience, right? Things happening faster. I want it right now. And so, you know, there was this um, agricultural revolution, which made it more accessible mm-hmm. for us to get food. And right. then from that, you know, we have World War One, World War Two. During those wars, men go off to war. Women are now working. So now right. we have, you know, women in the work workforce. Nobody's at home. And so now we need convenience and food, right? Mom and dad are too, too tired to cook. So now who's going to do the cooking? The companies are. Right. And so now we have manufactured goods. And so we're literally trading in our freedom, which might be uh, freedom in your health, right? Freedom mm-hmm. in your joy in order to get this convenience. Right of something delivered to your door, or you're picking something up in a drive through So um, that being said, I wanted to then, you know, really get into this conversation of then what are the effects of that suppression of who we truly are, that animal-like instinct, that instinct to go out and hunt, to build, to mm-hmm. get, to, you know what I mean, to create, to cultivate, because I think they're all one and the same, right? It's not just hunting, it's also the instinct to say, I'm going to build shelter and a greater mm-hmm. shelter, right? right? And a greater means of protection for my family, et cetera. So right. what what are the byproducts to you and what you've seen in people who come to you, have come to you in the past or are going to come to you that you say, oh, this is a problem. Like this right. is the outcome of that suppression right. of that aspect and, of self. And it's crazy. You're right because you you mentioned that it's it's convenience, right? And it is. And I'll add to that, Mm -hmm. that like we only do what we have to do, right? Our brains are wired to be safe, right? Our brains, our brains are, at the end of the day, our brains are wired to keep us alive to procreate. And to conserve energy. Yeah, exactly. That's true. It really is just to procreate. You hunt when you have to. You protect Mm -hmm. yourself when you have to. Mm -hmm. You you are dominant and physical if you have to. Um, So, Mm. like all animals, we're wired that way. Now, again, our brain has evolved Mm. beyond, you know, all other beasts to the degree that we can think and act and build and create and all these things. But at the end of the day, we are going to do what we what we think is necessary to get what we want. Yeah. And because mm-hmm. and history is a great thing to study. Right? From the yeah. term I, I love studying history, psychology more than business or kinesiology. Right? So I'm a speaker mm-hmm. and I'm a you know, I'm a business owner. Um, I'm also a trainer, so kinesiology, anatomy. But I believe that that my ability to teach in all areas, leadership, growth, um, relationships, you know, self-improvement, finance, fitness, are all related to my desire to understand the other sciences, history and psychology in particular. So if you know when Mm -hmm. and you know why, then what's in front of you makes more sense. Right, similar to our last podcast Absolutely. about about you personally, us personally. If you know, you know where, who that inner child is, what happened to him, why it happened, then you understand what it is you're you're confronting nowadays, right? In this current state of Correct. who you are. Same thing with with us as human beings. When you understand, like you just so eloquently outlined, in the history of of agriculture and civilization and commercialization and technology, all these things have been created. A, a life, even the forty-hour work week, like that's that that's a relatively yeah. new thing, right? So, absolutely. Now everyone's right. going to go into the office for forty hours a week, right? Now there's refrigerators. Right. Now there's microwaves. Even before fast food, then there's fast food. So now I don't have to hunt, right? In fact, because now I can go to Hawaii or Maui or go to Napa on the weekends, I prefer not to hunt. Right now, I don't have to physically do anything to get my food. So unless I have to do that or create a way to do that, 
I'm going to be physically less healthy because the human body was designed to move yeah. and not eat as often, right? But now because we've created through our oh. brain all these things that make it easier, then it's like being a, a lion or a tiger in a zoo, right? Lions and tigers yeah. are mm. meant to hunt, right? But put a lion or a right. tiger in a zoo and they lose their desire to hunt, until they're, until they're reminded. Absolutely. Right now, again, occasionally, yeah. that's something that happened where they're like, oh, shoot, this, this gate's open. This kid is... So it, there's a flashback, you know, in their DNA, and now they'll, uh, they'll attack, right? And then, and then we, as human beings, <laughs> will put the damn tiger down like it's his fault, right? But right. if you let him just sit there and chill and every day bring him steak, he gonna, he's going to be okay with that. He will do exactly that. Yeah. yeah so absolutely. the problem I see... Is and it's not and it's not a problem because because we have choice, right? And you're so yeah. good at you know at, at so it's at a decision. Getting, it's a decision we make, right? And you and by the way, follow Aquarius's healing podcast um, because Thank you. it's about that stuff, this stuff, mm. this stuff. That's the secret. So what I see people when I I don't see the diagnosis. I see what the problem yeah. is, right? And the problem yes. is not that you don't move enough, or you don't, mm -hmm. or you eat too much carbs, right? That is that is what we see. But the problem is you don't have a reason to move more or eat less yes. carbs. That's right, right? And unless you address yeah. that and figure out how to make yourself a tiger or a lion or a gorilla again, there's no reason for you not to sit there and let the trainer. Bring you steaks, right? So that to me, that that's the issue that I face with people, whether it's football players or, or fitness people, is is trying to get from them what's inside of them, and find a way to remind mm. them that that they are meant to be this this physical being that the world has made them forget. Right, and that's and that's why I you speak know, so Unk, much. It's that's so funny, like, because once you get that switch, it's easier. The whole game change. This episode of the DNA of Greatness podcast is brought to you by the BTY Symposium. The BTY Symposium is an immersive workshop aimed at getting the student athletes the tools they need to achieve their ultimate dreams. Whether a one day or multiple day format, the symposiums provide an all inclusive environment that nourishes athletes physically, mentally. And emotionally. Now back to the show. I want to say this, um, just a, <laughs> a little reminder from what you just said is, I was telling my girl the other day, I said, you know, it's funny how we literally make time to go outside as human beings now, right? <laughs> we used to have our being outside, and now oh, we make time so for true. it. That is so true. <laughs> we have it on our to-do list, right? And God forbid we're outside my for too long. To yeah, this. exactly, <laughs> exactly. It's like, <laughs> go outside, get some sun. <laughs> drink water yeah yeah exactly exactly <laughs> the, but the very is, essence like, and the very so, core of what we are yeah it is a, i mean and if you just go back because it's it's simple if you just look at it from and again if you choose if you choose mm -hmm. to accept that you are now a domesticated cat and you're not yeah. that big old bad you know uh, tiger that's okay. That's okay. But don't get yeah. mad when you see a tiger run Absolutely. by. That's a real tiger. <laughs> and you could have chosen to be a tiger. You know what I mean? So I used... Uh oh Yes. I, I made this analogy probably four or five years ago. I'll find a video. Or I'll redo it because mm -hmm. it's probably crappy. The video. <laughs> but I said... It came to me when I was going through my, my online program... Uh, which if you're watching, go to mycoachbobbybluefer.com. I have a $97 course. Mm -hmm. You can see all my videos and learn how I eat. But more importantly, how I mm -hmm. think about how I eat and how I work out. Yeah, we'll, make sure to, I said, we'll make sure to link that in the description. I will. But I said in the video that I've always trained like a beast, whatever that means, right? Which means hard, right? Mm -hmm. But I wasn't really fit or I wasn't really like moving toward this being lean like lean all the time. 
not lean getting ready for a show, not lean mm. getting ready for a competition, but lean as a as a matter of living. I wasn't lean mm. until I realized that I needed to eat like a beast. And it's Ooh. very simple. It's very simple. Oh, like this, talk like, about like it. this will, this will make sense to people, and then it'll probably piss them off at the same time, right? So there's three steps. Good. To it. Then it means it's the truth. Yes, three steps to it, right? Everyone says, "I can't, I can't, I can't go to the to the gym in the morning. I can't work out before breakfast. I, I got to eat first. I gotta, I can't get up and." At 5 a.m. to go to the gym. Okay. Okay. Well, you do know that all beasts have to go hunt before they eat. All of them do. All of them do. You have to exercise before you eat. Every beast. And and and, and, and many times for hours. Like if you're if you're a lion, yeah. you have to watch that gazelle. For like hours before you before you see the right time to go after it, you have to like figure out Correct. like you know which ones. I saw I saw a great video on National Geographic one time, and this lion or tiger was hunting this group of antelopes for the longest time, like days, like just walking behind them, and he was just laying the, laying the wait and watch them, and then at the second day he saw one of them had a had a limp on his hind leg. And the, and the guy who's, who's like filming it is like, he's noticed that one of the antelope is, <laughs> is injured, right? And like, and so he, so he knew which one he was going to go after. Because, yeah. I'll get to that in step two. So step one is, they all eat before, mm. sorry, they all, they all hunt before they eat. Hunt, so before human they eat, beings yeah. or animals, have, you have to exercise before you eat. And, and not necessarily in, a, in order. But if you know in your head that for every meal, I have to equate that to something I did exercise-wise, mm. right? So it's just it's just a, a mental equation. Like can't eat, right? If I don't hunt, right? If I don't work out, if I didn't go to the gym, I can't really eat. I haven't earned I haven't earned that antelope or that deer, right? Step one. Step two is they only kill. Enough to eat, right? You don't. You, you never see a, a tiger or a lion like killing. A, you know, killing an antelope and then killing one extra one and and just bringing it right because wow. even at, at at the most <laughs> at the most basic level in their brains, mm. they know number one, they know that there's energy expenditure to hunting. Yeah. And we're wired to, 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 like you said, to save energy. So why would I hunt two antelopes when I'm going to expend energy and I only need one to satisfy me? Mm. Right. So they only hunt what they need. Number two, in that same in that same vein, is they understand there's some risk to injury, mm. even if the the animal you're hunting is inferior. Right. There's risk to you getting injured by chasing it. There's risk to like like the antelope poking you. With their with their with their uh, antlers, right? So there's risk. So whatever the reason is, they only hunt what they need to survive, right? When they're hungry, mm. oh shoot, okay, let me go hunt. Let me kill what I need. That's it. I'll get the rest of my babies, right? And then mm. the last piece of that equation is when they're done eating, they walk away <laughs> and don't and don't hunt again <laughs> until they're hungry. Like they don't, you don't, you never see a lion. They go going, sleep. They man, go I'm sleep. not a fool, man, but I'm still gonna eat this. Never, dude. <laughs> Let me get some dessert. Never. Hey, hey, when's the last time you saw him get some dessert? <laughs> what yeah, about some never. dessert though? So, what do we do? <laughs> the opposite of all that, right? We never hunt. Wow. And all we and we wow. expect our, our our lioness, our lioness to bring food to us, right? Number two, we always kill more than we need. We go to BJ's, God forbid, BJ's, man, their serving sizes are, are enough for three, four lions, right? And then when we have more than we need, we don't walk away from it, right? When we're full, we sit there and we continue to eat. And no animal in the whole animal kingdom does that except for us. Mic drop. Except for us. Right there. So once you right understand here. that, no, then no, stop no, no, doing no. that. This is, this is gas. 
This is so gas. eat like a beast. This is so good. This is so good. Uh, no, 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 no. Okay, for any, I need y'all to rewatch this entire last thirty minutes and study this. You will have such a deep understanding, better than anything you learned in any college campus, about how our true physio- physiology works. Yeah. About how nature to, works. Right, exactly. No, no, no. You just... Oh, my goodness. So I don't need oh, to, my I goodness. don't need okay. to, like, like no ketosis, which I do. I don't need to know how to do high-intensity training, which I do. I just need to look at things, how they, how they, how they are on Earth and in, in behavior wow. and just study it and say, well, does that make sense? So ask yourself, wow. viewers... Does how we eat make sense? And the answer is no. And if it's no, and not. you want to be a you tiger, a lean tiger, then start changing how you eat. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's so funny because, you know, there's like these different mechanisms we use to justify our way into like a destructive behaviors, right? And, you know, we talk about this quite often, which is the reasons why we do so is because confronting the truth is far more painful than just justifying into a lie. Right. However, the body doesn't lie. And I think that's a part of this, you know, this entire idea of like the inner beast is really the the truest essence, the core of who you are. Right. That part doesn't lie. Right. And you and I had this conversation recently when I was telling you, like, you know, I've basically gone carnivore and I've never felt better in my life. I've never felt more energetic, etc. And I'm not the only one. Guess what? Even your favorite Joe Rogan is going back carnivore because he said he never felt better in his life. Right. Jordan Peterson for the last three years, every single ailment gone. Why? Right. Because they're eating like our ancestors always exactly. ate. Oh, yep. my goodness. I'm eating two meals or one meal and I'm full. Surprise, yeah, surprise. Exactly. That's exactly, exactly how my ancestors ate. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I'm not eating 17 things on one plate. I might just eat that one steak. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> I know. That's how our know. ancestors ate, right? Yeah. And, and again, the and body And they does didn't even name lie. it. They didn't name it. Absolutely right? People not. People say, oh, you don't eat Absolutely breakfast? Absolutely not. Well, I don't, call it, I don't call it by any names. I mean, I, 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 eat, I eat like once it's a day, food. so to lunch. I don't know, dude. It's like 4 o'clock. What time? What is that to you? <laughs> <laughs> when I'm, I when I'm hungry, I eat. I don't like you said. Name it. I don't even like name it, you, dude. I mean, that's a made up. Lunch and breakfast and dinner are made up things. That we made up. By marketers who want to sell you things. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Who want to sell you a consistent trough in order for you to continue yeah, exactly, to consume more exactly. products. Open your mouth. If I Open want to mouth. sell... <laughs> Open your uh, mouth. Uh, 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 you, you, and I, you and I got to create two more meals in a day. Like the in between. Actually, we're at brunch now. So we need to just make one yeah, more. Exactly. To make yeah, five brunch. meals a day. And we'll make our money off of that slot right there. <laughs> that's that's yeah. gonna be you and I's niche right there. We say some kind of between lunch and yeah. dinner. It's like Leonard, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Leonard. You're gonna yeah, need yeah, your yeah, lin- yeah. your yeah. Leonard yeah. meal. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and we gonna sell you a whole bunch of stuff that but your dunch. body doesn't dunch. even know how to process in the first place. He said Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> Leonard or Dutch. <laughs> so it's, it's, again, it's, it's, it's like I was it, it, Go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, it's all good. I think there's a slight delay. I don't know if it's recording or not, but What's our people good? can let us know. It should be good. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, what I was going to say is this. Again, the body has an inability to lie to you about what you're doing to it, right? Like mm-hmm. you always say life has a process. Everything has a process to it. Right. You right. have a certain goal. It doesn't matter how crazy it seems. There's a process to get you to that. So even in manifestation, people get mad and say, why am I not manifesting things? Like, oh, the universe is this. God is against me. No, 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 no. No, no, no. You, my friend, are going against the natural cycle. You're yeah. going against the natural yeah. process. It doesn't matter who uses the process. It could be it could be the worst criminal. Somebody you think is the most terrible, heinous person in the world. If they use a formula, they're going to get the result. Absolutely. Yeah. You know what I mean? We think because, oh, we're good, we're putting on this facade of, like, I'm so good, I should be getting results. Or I should be having a different life experience. Yeah. But in reality, you know, oh, why is it that, you know, that crooked person is making... Because that person that you're looking at is using the principles. And if you use them as damn Mother Teresa that you think that you are, right. you too, my friend, would get the results of wealth in your life. Right, right. You know and what I mean? Think, and, so- and a part of that process is getting out of state of denial. Go ahead. No, and, and part of it is so the the topic of the of the this episode is is unleashing the inner beast. Is that right? The topic, the, is mm. the exact name. Oh, you're, right. Uh, it was within, but I promise you, I changed it to unleashing my mind on everything I love. I love, love. It. I love it. I love it because that's a new that's a new course I just put out. That's I love crazy. It. 
and wow. we and we and we directed it toward fitness stuff and eating and working out, which makes some sense, right? But here's how yeah. here's how it really relates to to everything. And so by when, when, when I when it. I think of beast, right, what that means to me, and which is why I can easily transfer that information into a different lane, right? Motivational mm-hmm. speaking lane, business development lane, building a po- podcast, whatever it is. Because when I think of beast, I go back to the original beast, human beings, mm-hmm. right? So animals, right? So we are, the inner beast is, is called that because we, we're, not, we're not eliciting our inner lion, or an inner elephant, mm. we're, we're mm. listening, we're oh, pulling that's out the, the human. human beast, right? So we're not making something up, right? We're, we, we are extrapolating, my new word, we are extrapolating out of yourself what you are, right? So to me, now we, now we strip away, or, you know, all the cars and the houses and the clothes mm. and all these things, mm. right? And we begin to historically look at the evolution of our muscles, the evolution of our brain and psychology. And if you are willing and able and really want to be great and and bring about that inner beast, it's understanding, again, going back to all these episodes are intertwined, right? But going back to like the inner child, inner, the inner beast, right? That was a beast. But in many mm-hmm. ways, we, we denied that cub, that lion cub, the ability to grow up, right? Mm. So now we want that lion cub to do certain things for us, and it can't. So part of part of doing this the right way is figuring out why I whine about stuff, why I want mm-hmm. the world to save me about stuff, why mm-hmm. I think, like you said, why I think it's not fair. Like I've never, I don't want to allow my kids to use not fair. I don't. I don't I allow that. it. Not because I'm like you know higher mm-hmm. than higher than mighty. I just want them to understand that everything that that we get in our lives, we got because we we earned it, good and bad. Mm-hmm. Like we earned the D, the same way we earned the A. We earned the drop pass Ooh. in the playoffs, the same way we earned the touchdown we scored against whoever. Right? We earned a million dollar home, the same way we earned. The, the check that bounced, right? All those things we earned. So once you once you understand that, then it becomes okay. Now, no, stop whining about it. No one's gonna help you. I was saying in, in my boot camps, no one's coming to save you. Right? The chopper ain't mm-hmm. coming to the morning. It's us, twelve of us in this valley, and we gotta gotta fight, fight our way out. No one's coming to get us. But once you do that. As a beast, you say, okay, if I had to survive mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, how can I do that? And you can't do that unless you understand what your, where your scars exactly. are and your wounds are. So, so. What, I, what I do is I say, you know what? Like, and this is a segue into like my flowers for you. So, so my video, my long, my long form video today for YouTube is going to be about honest reflection of where you are in your craft. Right, so mm-hmm. instinctually, animals know what their advantage is, right, mm-hmm. and their disadvantage, right. The elk knows I'm 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 quicker this way than the like mm-hmm. instinctually. And see, you ever see yeah. a, a you know a gazelle being chased by a lion? It doesn't go straight because that's not his advantage. His advantage mm-hmm. is side to side, boom, 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 making yeah. the lion cut back and forth. So. So knowing that now it knows what it can do and what it can't do. So for mm. me, I watched our video and I was like, man, Neff is super articulate and eloquent and smart. Oh, wow. Thank you, man. And all these things, right? Come and on. I had to honestly look at myself and say, look, you're hella smart. You're creative. You're loving. You're inspiring. But there are times when you can be articulate, more articulate. Mm. And so rather than sit there and say, you know what? Man, I suck. You know, I I I can never do that. <laughs> like, that's not how beasts are. Like a lion no. is, that is wounded is not sitting in this in the grass, feeling sorry for himself. He's limping, and figuring out how how he can get a gazelle who's limping, so he can eat. 
Exactly. So exactly. it's not just my whole point yeah. of that. It's not just with physical stuff where you're finding all these these parallels in life. It's about everything. Right? When you think like mm -hmm. a beast, and in the beast world, there is no fair, there is no, uh, there is no um, feeling sorry for yourself. There either is I'm going to survive and procreate, or I'm not. And in, in their brains, if you're a chimpanzee or, or, or a lion or whatever, you're wired that way. We have to get wired that way again in everything we do. And when you do that, uh, it can, makes can I, the test and algebra I, easy. What did you say? No, I wanted to cut in and just say something that you've always said, and it just really came back to consciousness, is that we are apex predator, right? Like... The human being is actually at the top of this proverbial food chain. It's not to say, again, yeah. we're better than or God loves us more. No, it's just to say we have figured out how to have dominion over all of this. Over all right? of them, right. But yet we're also uh, – yeah, yeah, that we're the only ones who also have a choice not to do so. And so that came top of mind because when you said the human being, like – Again, it's it's something that's so far removed, even though we are humans, we think more towards the lion and the tiger and some people a bear and some people even a badger or whatever the hell, right? It's like, oh, this little animal, this little beast in them. But it's like, no, like the human being, your level of the ability to be consciously aware and to make decisions is what makes you that apex predator. That is what makes you inherently human. That is what yeah. that deciding factor of I'm going to conquer, of I'm going to win, of I'm going to create, as opposed to I'm going to self-loathe, I'm going to self-destruct. That is what makes you human. So I just want right. to touch on that because my mind just went on, uh, right. on, a, on a trail of its own right there when you mentioned that. That's so and deep. think about it. This episode of the DNA of Greatness is brought to you by Aquarius Wave Apparel. In a world filled with complexities, what we yearn for most is simplicity. Well, this is your answer to simplicity. As as big as the elephant is, right? As mm. bad as the sharks are, as bad as tigers are, they still tread softly when they see us. Right. They still <laughs> tread yep. softly when they see humans. And no one taught them yeah. that. No one like sat down and said, "Okay, these guys are smart." Like they inherently know what the hierarchy is. Wow. So we forgot. So so again, when I say beast, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to to get from inside of us, you know, some notion of another organism. I'm saying trying to get back to who we are innately, but use that in our current context that we live in. Wow. Right? With wow. working out, with going to work, with raising children, we can still tap into that inner beast in everything we do and think, right? We just have to understand and think about, okay, what does that mean in my current life? Uh, it's so funny that you even mentioned like um, they, they respect our presence or fear, whatever it may be. And I, I, I was saying this um, when my girl took me to the aquarium. I said, that it's, it's wild how, you know, there is no aquarium for humans. There is no zoo of humans. And there's a reason we for know that. of. <laughs> that we know of, yeah, exactly. Yo, correct, right. yeah, correct, exactly. That we know of thus far. It's and other again, humans. it's like, and, <laughs> yes, exactly. It's by it's by the human who has dominated the other human being. And yeah, again, yeah. like you're saying, it's not about this right or wrong. Like I'm not a believe at this point in my life, I I don't support zoos and things of that nature. Like I'm not a fan of that. And yeah, even yeah, that, yeah. Like last time at the aquarium, I was like, damn, like I kind of feel bad for that dude. Right. right but we right. have that conscious decision making. Right. And so even thinking of like the ability to do that, the ability to have dominion over your environment yeah. is and bad and bad and we can see predators. it in everything. Right. Absolutely. And the, 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 killer what? sharks. What? Yeah. Killer sharks. What? Tigers. Yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah, damn. Wait, we got whale meat that they're selling in some places. And it's like, yeah. do you understand that the magnitude of a whale compared to a human being? Yeah. It will swallow you by mistake. Yeah. You know? So, uh, again, this is this is such a beautiful episode because I knew, like, you always know how to not take the subject at face value, but see it at every dimension. And that's what gives us this depth. Like, I feel like this, this is my favorite episode so far, to be honest with you. And I feel like this is going to be such wisdom and such a game for anybody who listens because again 
Um, I've been really claiming, like, who am I in this world? How am I showing up? What am I? And, you know, you are the greatness coach. And I realized, like, I'm the personal power coach. Like, everything summed mm-hmm. up is really the same like personal that. power. And even, you know, the coaching program I built, et cetera, is around unleashing that personal power. But what you really have unlocked in this episode, Unc, is that that personal power is just inherent humanity. It's it's right. what you are as a human being, right? right? It's not even in the doing aspect. It's not even in all of the physicality. It's actually in the essence of what you are. Your, your ability to manifest a world around you is is not your doing. It's your thinking. It's your feeling. And your being, yes. Right? And so I yes. wanted to... Yeah, your being aspect. We're called human beings, not human doings for a reason. So I, like I want to kind of, as we cap off this episode, I want you to really get into that because I think you do such a, a phenomenal job of like, again, taking these concepts, making them digestible for anybody. And also for people who might think woo-woo, they will see you, they look at you, they're like, damn, like if this dude can be spiritual and understand these things, like who am I to deny them? You know, right. as buff as you are, as whatever right. as you may be. Right. So and, yeah, that and, being said, like, what's your perception on that? Yeah. So that's you know, personal power coach. I like that a lot, and I, I like that. I like that you said, mm-hmm. you know, it's our ability, right? It's it's our it's our coordinated ability mm-hmm. to do this to 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 take mm-hmm. again to take known ideas and thoughts and things mm-hmm. and take them one, two, three, four, twelve, fifteen, twenty layers deeper. To where most yeah. people would never go. Uh, but you're right. At the core of what I try to teach people, everybody, right? My kids, my football team, my my, my other coaches, my wife, you, uh, people I train, people I speak to, my BTY Symposium athletes, is mm. I just try to t- tell people or teach people to really sit and think about who the F you are. Like literally, like who, I like think about who you are. And when wow. you do that, there's several different ways to go with that. And I go all the ways. You know, one of them is like, okay, you know, per this episode, you are the most dominant animal on the planet. But you are the most hmm. dominant animal on the planet. Right? Who has been divided into these different areas, right, or categories, right? Tall, small, female, male, black, white, European, African, whatever. But still of the same dominant species. You've come from ancestry that proves beyond beyond any um, disregard, beyond any other argument, that you can overcome anything, right? I mean, if you're African wow. or African American or yeah, European, absolutely. European American, Asian American, like your ancestors have 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 come came from nothing to the U.S. If you're somewhere else, it's the same thing, right? We've all had yeah. ancestors who, through the natural laws of selection, have survived. Mm. Like your great great grandfather yeah. survived some crazy stuff, polio, whatever, and then he and then his children survived this and that. So by nature of how it works, mm. you are the cream of the crop of the crop. Right, yeah. you're the cream of the Literally. crop of your gender, the cream of the crop of your of your race and ethnicity, of the cream of the crop that is the human race. So now it's a matter of okay. So if if I come from that. And now I'm in an environment that, rightfully so, or, or however you view it, in an environment where I, I'm asked to use that greatness, that DNA, that personal power in an area or avenue that was not even thought of 20, you know, uh, 100,000, whatever years ago, Right? Trying to build a following on social media wasn't thought of 20 years ago, let alone mm-hmm. five generations ago. So that part is yeah. different. But how do I figure out how to use? Because the the atmosphere changes, but who you are as a species doesn't change for thousands and millions of years. Absolutely. So maybe at some Absolutely. point we'll have five legs, 
and three eyes, maybe at some <laughs> point, human beings. But it won't be for a long, 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 long time. But in those long, long, long time, <laughs> while we are, we're not changing physically, our brains aren't changing, our, our size isn't changing that much, there will be many changes in the environment we're put in. So I always say, like, our brains or our, our, bodies are, our bodies are wired and built and designed to be living in an environment way different than the one we're in right now. Way different. So mm-hmm. now it's a matter of saying, okay, I get it. We have all this cool stuff to do and have and experience now. But how can I figure out how my innate being that I am how I can use that to my advantage in this environment. And to do that involves thinking. So even coming back to yes. like me and my issues with with you know my speech being a barrier to me being great in this avenue, or my subconscious fears of, of not being liked being the barrier between me and and all the abundance in the world, right? Well, the difference is, or what allows me to fight through that, the beast in me that allows me to fight through that is, what would a slave do? What would a European, you know, person who's manufacturing whatever do? What would somebody in in Australia from five generations ago do? What would what would what would they do? They would figure out how to make mm-hmm. it work. Number one, they wouldn't put so Absolutely. much emphasis on how I looked and sounded, that only matters recently, Mm. right? That only matters recently. Before that, it was all about, okay, it's just me and you here. We gotta procreate, so I don't care how how big you are, how fat you are, how much abs you have, how much money you make, gotta procreate, right? Or I gotta gotta figure out a way to to, to dominate this person or my land's gonna be taken. So all this is new, Mm. right? So figure out, given where you are, right? This thought process you have about not being good enough, about not about having flaws, about all these things, that's not real. That's new. What would the mm. beast in me think? What would the beast in me do? Right? And, the, and by beast, I mean the original version of human being or, the, or, or, or human being 2.0 or human being 3.0 mm. before all the other crap made us domesticated as human beings. What would that guy do? And we love the rock. I just saw him next, next to me. I, I, I'll send a picture. It's a picture of me and the rock. It's a split image. <laughs> but I just saw him. But, but we uh, love him soon. because his mentality is just like that. So we all see Congrats. that we should be like that, but don't have to have the patience or the wherewithal to sit down and say, you know what? Let me think about this. Should I go to to Napa every weekend? Should I barbecue every weekend? Should I Should I care about how I sound on this video, or just keep pushing through. All these things that we face, if we think about it through that prism, it changes how we address it. And so my gift yeah. to you guys is is my ability to figure out how I can explain it and storytell it and anecdote it in a way that makes you think one more time every day or five more times mm. every week. So eventually, you become it becomes your predominant thought, and whatever you're trying to be great at, fitness mm. or your or your business, if you just think, okay, all this other stuff is just it's fun, and I enjoy it. I'm not getting rid of my hats or my or my football games, or but I'm also putting it in the right context when I'm thinking about myself and and mm. judging my movements and my patterns and my behaviors based upon what my ancestors, the original human being, human being 1.0, what would they have done or how would they have acted in the same situation given a different atmosphere? That's yeah, a long winded powerful, huh? powerful, powerful, powerful. <laughs> no, no, no. There's no such thing. That's what we're here for, to have the conversation. And it's it's about value at the end of the day, both for ourselves, you know, as well as anybody else who tunes in. And what you get from it is what you get from it. But there's something I really love, like you said, is again, if I can make you think one more time today, five more times this week, cultivating that self-awareness. But there is, um, to kind of key in everything and conclude it, um, not to be morbid because, again, I stand on personal power. But in order to step into that personal power, we also have to have enough of a fire under our ass to make those steps. And for me, the greatest revelation, like let's say if it was just in my physiology, my eating, right? Somebody would think to themselves, why would you not 
eat carbs anymore. Like, but aren't you suffering, etc.? Like, wouldn't this happen to you? Wouldn't that happen to you? And I'm, or, but at the end of the day, it's really they don't think that it's possible for themselves. So people would tell us what they believe is possible for them and put it onto us, right? But once you're in something, you realize that there's a next level of existence. There's another level of life, of vibrance, like the aspects of self you didn't even know were possible, but right. you yearn for. Like people yearn for peace, but don't understand that it, if you don't have a conscious meditative practice in some shape or form, you're not going to cultivate peace. If you are going by external conditions and circumstances, you are never going to have peace. That is not the process. You must go within. That's how peace is cultivated. In order for you to have, you know, the physiology you want, you have to have the physical activity and you have to have, you know, basic fundamental foods that are readily accessible. And so that being said, I really wanted to bring it to this kind of grim, but fuck it. Like we're here now. You are depressed. You're anxious. You're concerned. You're frustrated. You're resentful. And all of it is because you are locking in that true version of yourself, that personal power, that inner beast. That's the only reason. I'm telling you right now because you can look at statistics, Unc, and you can see this throughout history. There is a correlation between sedentary living, and I don't just say sedentary in the body, I mean sedentary of the mind, right? We stop yes. thinking, we stop like being conscious creators. There is a correlation between anxiety levels and our sedentary lifestyles. Go look at any chart right now. I will, I will send you $20 right now if you can disprove that we're living in the highest levels of anxiety right now. I will send yeah. you 20 yeah. bucks on Venmo because it doesn't exist. And so we think to ourselves, correlation causation. Well, you know, uh, there must be just more anxiety because we're realizing more people are anxious. No. Or we must be more depression because we're realizing people are depressed. No. It's because we're living in unnatural ways. And when you live unnaturally, you're going to have a negative byproduct. Like, you, you can't eradicate that aspect. And I, you know, as spiritually enlightened as I, you know, I do my best to, to, to become, etc. What I actually realize the more deep I get is the basic fundamentals of life, right? When you get so deep that, that you're, you know, oh, I just, uh, you're in the house and you're just sitting in a corner all day. Like, I don't think that's humanity. I think true enlightenment is go outside, get some sun, like breathe deep. Like watch your thoughts and be conscious about your thoughts, right? Move about mm -hmm. life in a certain way. Be, you know, be be um in in sync with whatever is happening with within you. Right. This is like to be enlightened. This is to be awakened for you know people on that side and for the people who might be into let's say hustle culture, or the grind mentality, etc. If you're looking to be the most productive you can be in your life, why would you not work with the natural aspects of who you are, like? Right. Why would you separate yourself from the very thing that allows right. you to be productive? You know what I mean? Like, and just to, to really close it off, I always say this now, and I really do be saying this. <laughs> <laughs> our, our, our our weekly uh, weekly members will know what we're talking about with that one. Yeah, exactly. That's an inside joke you're gonna have to stay around for. Yep, Easter egg. Yep. But I, I say this is why work against your psychology in order to to get the change you want, right? So when I'm teaching yeah. habit formation, I used to teach a way that was so hard and like not everybody is built like, let's say, Coach and I right now because of what we've taken ourselves through, right? Mm -hmm. Like people watch the David Goggins of the world and say, oh my God, like, but you have to realize like David Goggins was step one at first. It was like just taking the half a mile runs that was, yeah. you know, getting him completely winded and he couldn't take one step further. Like... So Unc and I might be at a position where we could just stop some cold turkey and it's like, that's the life we're living now. And that's in all of us. And I'm not mm -hmm. going to like subject you to, oh, you, you have less than it's in every single one of us. However, I am going to say work with your psychology. Like if you understand that habits are formed through uh, emotion and mental repetition, then use that process for your advantage. Right. If you understand that this food as opposed to that food is going to get you this result. Then wean yourself off of this one right. gradually and get yourself on this one. See the byproduct of it and it's going to incentivize you to do more of that activity. Like use, use your natural state of being yep. in order to get the very results you want. Because at the end of the day, this podcast, you know, this product that we've created for you guys, this service in essence, is really to unlock something that was already in you. The DNA that is within you already of greatness. But again, 
don't work against your own good in order to get yeah. those things. That's one thing I, I just, again, that's like my closing statement. Because I see people suffer and they're mad. And I'm like, bro, like work in tune and your body will reward you for it. Your right. mind will reward you for it. Your life is going to be a byproduct of the very things you're doing in that natural cycle. Right, right. And the common denominator with that, this would be my parting statement, the common, the common mm -hmm. thread with that is that it requires that you think, that you be a thoughtful, introspective, honest, self-talk person. And going back to the topic of the podcast, right? If, if you think about a beast, any beast besides human beings, for this, for this particular example, if you, if you leave lions to their own accord, even in a cage, they mm. will figure out how to get out, get food, procreate, all those things. If you continue to just have them on a schedule that you mandate, they will not. So we, as human beings, managed by other human beings, if we allow that schedule to predominate, right, schedule of media we watch and listen to, schedule of who we hang out with, of what we eat, without mm. ever sitting back and trying to figure out, how can I make this better? How can I get to that? How can I do this? Then we will be the domesticated cat and not the one wow. that becomes free. So it's that simple. Like, like think like a real beast would think. All beasts have the ability to think about the ways out. Like yeah. guinea, guinea pigs on a, on a hamster wheel, you know, rabbits in a maze. They all have the ability, right? And we are the smartest of all of them. So the only reason we're not getting through this, like, like Neff said, is we are unable, unwilling to really sit there and imagine and dissect and interject and all these things that help allow us to, to deal with it. So be a beast. Mm -hmm. Mentally, physically, spiritually, and you can't lose. You can't lose. That's so damn good. Man, we appreciate you guys for tuning into this episode. Uh, I have to reiterate this is easily my favorite, just as far as like how in depth, yet how straightforward and applicable everything that we talked about here is. Like, again, if you just sat and listened to segment, I think it was like minute 37, right, where where Unk is going in about the three steps or the three things that animals do not do, eating yeah. like a beast. I'm, that's yeah. what we'll title it for right now. Yeah. Bruh, just that right there is going to give you enough game to move through life because I already took that and I've ran with it with every aspect of my life in my head right now. I'm yeah. like, wow. In everything, right? In your everything. finances, in your relationship, et cetera. Like... <laughs> so for y'all who don't get, you know, unk every single day, like, you know, this is the best that we can do to deliver both his and both my own, you know, unique perspectives and our unique gifts and to bring it to the world. But if there are people out there who are wanting to work with, you know, either Coach Bobby or myself, Coach Bobby Bluford, would you like to let the people know how they can get, how they yes, can sir, work as all important than like getting a hold or content? Yeah, as always, guys, Coach Bobby Bluford. That's B L U F O R D, no E. Um, CoachBobbyBluford.com, and then at Coach Bobby Bluford on all social media and YouTube platforms. Uh, again, I do. You know, my main avenues right now are public speaking, and then I do these uh, BTY symposiums for student athletes, and then I do leadership workshops for companies mm -hmm. and, and and groups uh, who want to who want a different perspective on how to uh, how to create culture and build leadership uh, tenants in whatever the program or company looks like. Beautiful. So y'all make sure to tap in. We will leave those links for you in the description below. As for myself, I have recently launched a coaching program. It's a group coaching program, an eight-week program, breaking free from people pleasing and stepping into your personal power. That as well as a course for those who might not be in the space or ready for the uh, group coaching. There is a done by yourself or a DIY course that is basically the exact same process, exact same strategies, exact same workload is just without those, you know, 
um, group trainings and the Q and A's and you know the same level of depth in uh, interaction and accountability with our group. So again, make sure to tune into our description below and we will give you guys the resources necessary. Otherwise, appreciate you guys. Take care. Peace. Peace. Get buff. Get buff. Be it now and then it will come to you. You can't wait till you get it to become that thing.